strike of a light bulb. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. Your micro, I'm hard body like Tycho. Heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the vapors of paper. Hypnotic to the thirst. I'm pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine crackery stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. And welcome back one more time for Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal Developer Commentary. I am Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And I'm pretty jazzed, Tony. Are you? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see one of your levels. You know what? It's a sunny day here in California. <laughs> uh, sorry for all you people who don't live in California because it's awesome in California right now. And now we're at Dax. Which and is... we're about to see the best cutscene that Ed Insomniac has ever done. That's true. The Courtney In my cares. humble opinion. So I, yeah, you know what? You're right. You're right to be pretty jazzed because there's a lot to be jazzed about. Was this the level that had your crate throwing apes? Cut this out of it? was the level with the crate throwing apes that got cut out of the level. Oh man! Because they did not work. They, if I remember correctly, they were only in this segment right here. They were only in this segment right here, that and was... they were a lot of work. And they, that giant robot torso, by the way. Let's give it up for the giant robot torso. A Colin Munson special, if I remember That's right. correctly. Oh, the giant robot. You know what? I still use the giant robot torso as an example to this day. So the giant robot torso came out of the crate throwing monkeys or apes or right. whatever because uh, we worked really hard. That was in the original design. They, there was the crate throwing monkeys and the swarmer in this level was these little roly-poly guys that would curl up into a ball and then roll at you. Right. And what the the ape did is he would run around to blocks of crates and grab them and then throw them at the player. But he could also pick up the swarmer enemies and throw them at the player. Right, I forgot Like that about was that. what was going on at this level. And there was a lot of there were a lot of problems in getting them to work and getting them sort of getting it all up and running. There was a lot there. I mean I could just go on forever. But I'm going to try to keep cut it short a little bit because well, we might as well talk about them while we're in this segment. What, uh, what, what were their problems? I mean, bes besides walking to a location and picking up a crate, I imagine that was ninety percent of your problem. I mean, that getting that the the actual pickup part of it was very difficult to sync up and do everything properly because you really what you really want is to do some sort of IK uh, on the arms. So what's IK? Uh, I wish I could know what it stands for. Inverse but it's, but it's, inverse kinematic. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, basically, all you, it, basically you can to try to simplify it as much as I can. You can basically say the hand is supposed to be here at this location, mm -hmm. and then you basically work backwards from that joint up to his shoulder, and sort of figure out how to line up those joints in a way that gets his hand in the position that you want it to be. Right, so if, for example, you were pushing on his hand, it would bend his elbow. Right, exactly. Uh, whereas normally, the way that these things are set up, if you pushed on his hand, it would just move his hand. It wouldn't do anything to his elbow. Right. So what you ah, really shit. want in a system to do that kind of stuff is you want an IK system to be like, we need his hand to be at this location, and this is where he's standing, just calculate what you need to do to his arm to get it there. Right. But we don't have that IK, so we couldn't really get that sort of effect looking clean and nice and, it's not and the, working. And it's not, IK isn't the kind of thing you can do on a PlayStation 2, like, really well. Um, right? Like, you can do it a little. I mean, if you go from the ground up to develop an IK system, and that's going to be what you're doing in the game, yeah? like you can do it. Okay. But Ratchet and Clank is not that good. Okay. <laughs> that was we didn't have that capability. Right. Um, so, it's so getting that sort of bit working and having them just sort of walk up to these enemies that could be anywhere, and, and it was just getting it to look right was always a big problem and we never got it sort of looking to the point where we were satisfied with it and that we were happy with the way that it all looked right and so in the end we just decided you know what it's not working uh we've we've scrapped and redone these guys like three four times at this point already and they're uh, they're only in this one little part of the level too they right weren't exactly. anywhere else in the game i mean there were like 10 of them yeah like really <laughs> <laughs> 
And so it was kind of like, all right, uh, we're just going to move on from these guys and we need to do something that's not them. And that's when Colin was just like, I'm just going to make it as simple as possible. Giant robot torso. Is that where the torso came from? I didn't that know is that. where the torso came from. That's funny. He's like, they don't even walk. They don't do anything. They fly and then they shoot at you. And oh. Dude, this segment's hard. Yeah, I think this is our first big difficulty ramp of the game. Wow. Was this the uh, the bridge level of, of our game? Uh, I don't know about the bridge level, but it's definitely where we start going up to another level. All right, I'm going to try this section one more time, and if I fail, I'm, I'm going to switch to the regular one and come back to it. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Do I have any better weapons? Oh, shit. I have the shield generator. Yeah, that that'll help. Yeah, look at that. You're just now you're just you're not just you know killing these guys. Oh yeah, no awesome. no problem now. I'm good. So yeah, I mean there was a lot going on there, and so there was a lot of back and forth on this level, and so you know this level reminds me a lot of my failures and my shortcomings as a human being. As well, it and, should. So that's always fun, and that's always <laughs> nice. You know, and that's another reason why I'm in a good mood today. <laughs> So, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the lack of IK, that was one of the reasons why we never did giant enemies that had big feet, right? Um, Because uh, yeah, getting yeah, them to I, walk on slopes, we, we couldn't do well without IK either. Yeah, I mean, we did it to an extent, but, I mean, granted, we never, we never went crazy with it because, we, I mean, Ratchet has a tiny, tiny little bit of IK. Like a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of IK on Ratchet. Uh-huh. Um, but he's the only one that has it. And he's probably the only one that's going to, you know, well, obviously. But uh, it's it's just, a, it's a lot of work. And unless you're going to make it a big part of your game, like it's not worth putting in the time to get a really crazy, robust IK system. I mean, it's not something that just sort of emerges fully formed. You can't just put a guy on it for a couple days. It doesn't make unless, it so. Well, unless it's Ryan. Uh, <laughs> Ryan uh, Jucket? Jucket, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jucket will Jucket will fire you up an IK system in like two days. <laughs> Ryan Ryan was a guy we worked with at uh, Bionic. At Bionic. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're just getting a little bit off topic from Insomniac. <laughs> but I know if, if Ryan was to listen to this, which he's not going to, so it's probably... <laughs> oh, Fuck! But he would take exception to saying that you couldn't just work up an IK system in a couple of days. Okay, so no one but Jucket could do an Nobody IK Nobody but Jucket could do that. <laughs> a really good, robust one, at least. Right. All right, so we're going we're gonna to go down the main path here. Uh, do you want to do this, the, the part with the Courtney Gears bit at, or the, uh, the other part first? Uh, you know what? Your, your choice, buddy. I think we should end on the Courtney Gears. Okay, let's end on the Courtney Gears bit. All right. Uh, this was Moo's section of the level. Yep. This is what he was talking about. Or, no, he didn't talk about it on camera. He talked about it off camera. About how he would like to come back to do this. But, too bad, Moo. You don't get to come back for this. <laughs> We're going to talk shit on your work without you. Oh, uh, these crates right here? These ones? Yeah. I coded those. Oh, wow. Yeah. You did a lot of work on those. Good job. They're pretty awesome. Because, like, they, they can blow up and, uh, and, and they have gravity and all sorts of stuff. It was crazy. Wow. And uh, I, I had to make them as robust as possible because uh, since they were, like, generally speaking, when I coded stuff, it it didn't end up in the game. Like, I was usually coding stuff because a programmer was busy and we needed a prototype. Uh, but since this one was going to end up in the game, I had to do all kinds of crazy shit. Like, uh, uh, since it has gravity and can fall, like, I needed to make sure that you could place these without them being a huge problem and... Like, oh, yeah. It, they were very interesting. Let's put it that way. You do realize that they're just boxes. What? Tony, I, I do my best work on everything, even if they're just boxes. Okay. You know, like some people, some people will make a box and they won't care about how hard it is for a designer to set that up. But not me. I made those boxes auto snap and shit. Like they, and they have different destruction states. And they, they're, they're not boxes, Tony. They're important pieces of gameplay. All right, well, hopefully somebody, while playing through this game, noted, put notice as to how much work went into those boxes. <laughs> well, look, they're destructible. Some would say too much work. 
Not me though. I would never dare say. That was uh, that was at least a week of my time. It no, was... I, what? No, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I'd say at least a week. There's no way that took you a week. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Uh, but you know, if that took you a week, you should never be allowed to do anything again. Why is that, Tony? That that's like two hours tops. <laughs> Considering the, the the stuff we had in place already. Like, you could have done that. You could have just picked that up and taken it out in, a, you know, a couple hours. Well, it does have, uh, like, that. that's made up of, like, three or four different models that you have to use based on its uh, destruction states and stuff like that. So, it's, uh, and I think it even has, like, a detection for what part of the box you're hitting so that it spawns the right, you know, corner breaks off and stuff. Like, it's, it's more detailed than it seems. I find that hard to believe. And like, if if uh, if the robot torso destroys one on the bottom, then one on the top has to fall, and you make a nice crushing sound with some good effects. And like that was at yeah. that was at least at least a day. You know what else? You know, falls nicely when you destroy the one on the bottom. What? All of the crates that we have in the game. Oh, already. dude, those crates are so hard to set up. <laughs> They, uh, oh, fuck. And, yeah. I don't think we've talked about the joy that is placing crates in Ratchet and Clank. Uh, no, we haven't, have we? Because we, we farm that stuff off to the lowest person on the totem pole. Yeah, whichever is the newest designer. The newest or the, person's like, hey, guess what? You get to place crates or the, everywhere in the game. Or the least busy tester. It's, have it's usually fun. one of those two. Ah, oh, shit. Come on. Because, uh, yeah, I don't, I, it's the kind of thing you take for granted. That for most of the development, we're working in levels that are sort of crateless. Right. And then, and then somebody walks by and is like, this game isn't fun. What's wrong? Why isn't Ratchet fun? Oh, we're not breaking crates all the time. Somebody needs to place crates everywhere. The crates are very important, yeah. There's uh, a science to placing crates as well. Yeah, I mean, you can't uh, you can't just place them all facing the same direction. You know, that's that's an artless crate placement. you gotta, right. You got to... You know, place them in boxes that look random, but still, you know, are uh, uh, well thought out. And you can. And you have to place them one by one, everywhere. Yeah, I mean, by uh, hand. You basically, you, 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 we couldn't, we couldn't just duplicate a crate because the duplicate feature of Maya was really shaky when it came to things like crates. Uh, and crates were tied into the occlusion system uh, because. Uh, like, if, if there was a building blocking them, we didn't want them to draw. So, anytime you moved crates, occlusion had to be rerun on the levels. And that was a long process. Yeah, occlusion would take an entire evening to do. To, to just run the automated process that would do that. So, uh, crates were really complicated. And uh, the worst part about the crates is it's not like I could, uh, you know, do one crate placement and then duplicate it everywhere and then change it like you had to place one crate and then you know uh start duplicating that crate and then using a special macro to move it up and down because the crates were not allowed to differ at all on the on the z axis the up down axis like they had to have the exact same number or they would break horribly uh and it, oh man it was just and then you had to put each group of crates into their own individual uh, Maya group and name it something separately. Because if you if you put all the crates in one group, the game would just come to the screeching halt. It, it, it was incredibly inefficient to do that way for some reason. They were not fun. So my crates are better. <laughs> I just, I, I always loved the pain of the first person, like, the first time somebody has to place crates, they're always just like, this is the stupidest, most horrible task I've ever had to do in my life. Yeah, it's pretty... These fucking crates. Well, and you have to place two sets of crates. Like, you don't... You, uh... That's right, for the major and minor segments. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you, you have to place major crates and minor crates, and the minor crates have to be in different looking piles. And, oh, man... For people who might have forgotten, major segments are 
the base or the enemy setups or segments the first time you go through them. Right, like what I'm playing right after, now. And then after you beat them, they go into the minor setup, which generally have less crates and less bolts. I think and we do it that way, so you can't just go through over and over and over again to, to bolt farm. Right. I I think at some point we uh, we realized that this was a terrible idea. Uh, doing the uh, we realized that that uh, uh, major and minor segments were just not worth the amount of worth work that they took. So <laughs> after after a certain point, we stopped doing minor segments. But I I think in this game we still had them. Oh God! Now you've got me thinking about crate placement, man. You're just bumming me out. There's a like there's a whole art to it, and like the thing about crate placement that's awesome. Well, I guess not awesome, but it's one of those things where. Everybody has an opinion on them. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things where it's so it's so minor, but the more minor something is, the more people feel like they have a right to chime in on it. Yeah. So, like, those are for sure one of those people where everybody's going to chime in on crate placement. I got a bug once that said crate placements on level 17 are uninspired. <laughs> that was the... That was the... That was it. That was the whole bug. And it's like, oh, shit, I got to go back and replace every crate on level 17. And make them inspired. Make them inspired, yeah. Uh, I have no idea what that meant. Oh, uh, I have an interesting story about uh, about the design of this level. Uh, when, uh, when Colin was designing this level, he had to design three levels at the same time. Did you know that? Uh, I didn't know that... Uh... For sure, but okay. So during this during this one deadline, and it, basically we would have five weeks to design levels uh, on paper, right? And and you'd get a, a a level on paper plus you know a rough block out of a level in five weeks, right? So for some reason during this particular uh, milestone, Colin had to do three levels, uh, you know, arted and blocked out and so forth, right? Which is it's a ton of work. And he just didn't have time to do them all. So what he did was he he did this level and two other levels. And uh, on this level and one other level, he just, he did what he called a parody of Ratchet gameplay. Right? So uh, basically he took, he took all the uh, quintessential Ratchet and Clank type setups. Like that, uh, if you watched the Ratchet 2 commentary, you'll notice there were a couple levels that we pointed out were like the the baseline ratchet combat setup. Uh, do you remember mm. that? Yeah. So Colin did a couple where he just he made them what he said were parodies of them. They were, uh, uh, you know, just like so much like the regular ratchet setup that he thought they would get ridiculed and <laughs> you know and and it was it would be clear to everyone that he just didn't have enough time to do a full on design right. Uh, and then Mark Cerny came in to uh, evaluate his level designs and. <laughs> And he said, let me guess. And he pointed to the two that he had done just, you know, like, it took him one day to do each level, right? And he said, you spent all your time on those two. And then just, <laughs> and then just screwed off on this one. And Colin was like, no, it was the other way around. So apparently, making levels that were a parody of actual levels was a more effective way of making <laughs> Ratchet levels than, than doing it the other way. So if you guys are wondering why this level is so good, it's because Colin was ridiculing Ratchet gameplay. It was always fun to talk to Colin. I, we talk about Colin a lot. We should get is, him on, yeah. We should, but it was always fun talking game design with Colin because he came from Army Men. Yes. From the Army Men game. 3DO he worked for was his first and not, I'm not going to say anything about Army Men, but... I mean, anybody who's played Army Men, I don't got to say anything about Army Men. Fuck. Um, so it was always fun to hear him, like, when he did something amazing, he would never really seem to realize that it was amazing. Uh, oh, because he was, he was very self-deprecating? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really liked working with Colin because uh, uh, I learned so much from him. Like, he has a really good instinctual understanding of how all this stuff should should work you know so he understood ratchet gameplay well enough to parody it whereas i didn't understand it well enough to do that you know uh so i mean i don't know if that's 
the same thing as what you were saying, but go Colin. You've been, you spent a lot of time here on the hacker puzzle there, buddy. I, I'm, I'm making progress. Shut up. Uh, fortunately, I'm getting act tuned, and I can actually see it happening. Uh, what happens is that uh, every time that you, every time that you lose, it spawns more greens and fewer reds. Oh, you went to the, you went straight to the Courtney Gears. I don't think so. No, this is this is when he finds out about the uh, the Death Star that turns things into uh, uh, squishies. Huh. Yeah, this is this isn't the one with the Courtney Gears video. Location unknown. However, a large transport vessel left this facility yesterday. It was headed for the Obani Moon system. The Obani Moons, huh? Well, we better check it out. <laughs> 